On the morning of Friday, 9 October 2015, 18-year-old Jacqueline Jackie Kausewa had just finished writing her grade 10 life science exams at Augustinium Secondary School when she got into a scuffle with a male teacher after he confiscated her cell phone and refused to give it back. The male teacher in question was the Oshiherero language teacher, 32-year-old Ananias Kamati. Ananias had reportedly also been having a sexual relationship with Jackie, which she ended weeks prior before she started dating a boy from her class. Jackie's decision to end the inappropriate teacher-student relationship reportedly made Ananias jealous and angry to the point that he had become physically violent towards her and had started stalking and threatening her. Fearful for her life, Jackie filed a protection order against Ananias towards the end of September 2015. On the day in question, after Ananias refused to return her cell phone, Jackie reported the matter to one of the teachers, who in turn advised her to go to the school principal, Rudolf Matengu. Since the principal was busy, Jackie approached another teacher, who also referred her back to the principal. It was then that Jackie decided to go home and involve her overprotective older sister, 30-year-old Cecilia Zembu Kausewa. When Cecilia arrived at the school with Jackie around 1 p.m. in an attempt to resolve the issue, Ananias informed the sisters that he was not prepared to return the gadget since he was the one who had bought it for Jackie. Cecilia reportedly agreed that if it meant Ananias would stop harassing her younger sister, then he could keep it, but that he needed to return Jackie's SIM card that was still inside the phone. Ananias reportedly agreed to take the sisters to where he had stored the phone in order to hand over the SIM card. And with that, the trio left the school premises through an opening at the back of the school. However, less than an hour later, about two kilometers from the Augustinium Secondary School, two bodies would be found by a passerby and investigations into the suspected killer would unearth secrets that rocked the nation. Rudy Bowell was walking in the bushy area behind Yellum Primary School in Commonstall when he saw a suspicious looking man and heard someone gasping for air. Upon closer inspection, he saw one lifeless body while the other was barely hanging on. Rudy then decided to run after the suspicious man, but when he got to the Moses Gadweb Street, Rudy lost sight of the suspect and asked students who were walking along the road if they had seen the man. The students reportedly told Rudy that the man had jumped into a taxi driving towards Ochomuise. Rudy then returned to the crime scene, but the woman who was initially gasping for air was no longer moving nor making a sound. It was then that he decided to rush to the nearby primary school to pick up his son and went home to make a call to the police at exactly 2.18pm. After the call to the police, Rudy's wife insisted they go back to the crime scene but when they got there, there was still no sign of the police. Rudy then saw a policeman driving towards the traffic lights near the vocational training center and stopped him to alert him about the murders. Around 3 p.m., other police officers started arriving to conduct forensic on the two bodies that would go on to be identified as the Kausewa sisters, Jackie and Cecilia. Autopsy results later revealed that Jackie, who was still wearing her school uniform at the time of her death, was stabbed 26 times and Cecilia was stabbed 20 times with a sharp object. The Kausewa sisters were laid to rest at Umashete in the Arongo region on 17 October 2015. Police investigations into the double murder found that after fatally stabbing the two sisters, Ananias took a taxi back to Augustinium Secondary School and wrote a suicide note in one of the classrooms before attempting to hang himself. The content of the suicide note has not been revealed in its entirety, but it is reported that Ananias also gave instructions of where he wanted to be buried. When the first suicide attempt failed after the rope broke, he drank battery acid in the classroom before retiring to his teacher's quarters situated on the school premises. Before leaving the classroom, he wrote on the chalkboard, Please forgive me, but ask Mrs. Shipanga and the boyfriend. Mrs. Shipanga was reportedly also a teacher at the school. When the police arrived at the Augustinian premises on the same day around 10 p.m. to make an arrest, Ananias was found barely alive inside his room and was instead rushed to the Katatura State Hospital where he was admitted in the intensive care unit. Preliminary investigations revealed that Ananias started his teaching career in 2008 at C. Heuva Junior Secondary School in the Maheke region. He resigned in 2010, however, after the school started investigations into claims that he was having a sexual relationship with one of the schoolgirls. After that, he was used as a relief teacher in the Ochozanjupa region and from March 2012 until December 2012, he was a temporary teacher in the Comas region. On 21 January 2013, Ananias was appointed on a permanent basis at the Augustinium Secondary School where he taught Oshiherero to grade 10s and 12s. 
During that time, he was accommodated at the school's boys hostel. However, after nine months in the hostel, it emerged that he was having a sexual relationship with another schoolgirl and was suspended from the hostel for misconduct. The following year, the school once again accommodated Ananias despite his inappropriate relationships with schoolgirls, but this time he was given a house instead of a dorm on the school premises. At the start of 2015, Jackie arrived at Agustinium from Omaruru's Tibasen Junior Secondary School to repeat her grade 10. During her first semester at the school, it is reported that Jackie was living with Ananias on the school premises under the pretext that they were siblings. However, mid-second semester, Jackie moved out of his place, thereby setting the wheel in motion for his continued harassment as the possessive Ananias fought to maintain control over her. His actions became more daring after Jackie ended the relationship, as Ananias would profess his undying love for her for all to see on his Facebook account. In one post shared on 6 October 2015, Ananias reposted a photo of two dead bodies with the following status update. This ghost is haunting me again. Please help me before it is too late. In another post written in Oshiherero, Ananias wrote, I need prayers. Please pray for me or take me to a pastor who prays for people. After nearly two weeks in ICU, Ananias died in hospital and was buried at his home village at Okanjira in the Ovitoto area on 31 October 2015. Following the brutal murders, President Haga Genkop instructed the Namibian police and city of Vintuk to clear riverbeds to ensure regular patrols are intensified. Following the order by the head of state, the Omake campaign was born in November 2015. Omake, a joint operation between the Namibian Police Force, City Police, Namibian Defense Force, and the Namibian Correctional Service, was a debushing operation to clear riverbeds in and around Ventuk to reportedly make the city a safer place to live. That's it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. If you like the content and what I do over here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. If you give this video a like, that will be much appreciated as it's the easiest way to help my channel grow.